Hello everyone, I'm Han Yun from KAIST and my advisor is Professor Ms. Jung. And today I'm going to talk about our work, which is what you can forget, exploiting parallelism for zone named spaces. Before we move on to the main talk, I'll give you a higher summary of the talk. Zone named spaces, also known as ZNS, is an emerging storage interface which can make SSDs cost efficient. In this work, we analyze the problem of ZNS by using two production ZNS SSDs. The problem is that it is hard to exploit the internal parallelism of SSDs since CNS does not provide abstraction required to manage the parallelism. To solve this problem, we propose two simple modules. The first module named Interference Profiler gets information required to exploit the internal parallelism. Then, based on this information, our second module named Interference Aware IO Scheduler adjusts the order of request to exploit the internal parallelism. And now let's move on to the main talk. And firstly, let's go over what the ZNS is. ZNS is an emerging storage interface that divides logical order space into multiple zones, and each zone is typically mapped to one or more flash block. In ZNS interface, there exist two constraints on each zones. First, we must like the data in a sequential manner and second, we need to reset the zone before modifying it, just like a flash block. To obey the constraints, both side FTR needs to manage some tasks which are originally performed in SSDs. First, it should manage the page-to-page -page mapping to convert random access into sequential. It also needs to perform garbage collection to erase invalid data generated from out-of-place updates. Then what's the benefit of ZNS? The main benefit of ZNS is to make the underlying SSDs more cost efficient. Specifically, since they are only sequentialized, zone to block mapping is sufficient for SSDs. Therefore, the item requirement is reduced and it can make SSDs more cost efficient. So, we can summarize the main concept of ZNS as follows. Let's make SSDs lighter by exposing the block level constraints to the host. And note that there is no constraint on the size of zones, and it is up to the decision of vendors. So there can be a device which translates a large zone to many flash blocks spanning across multiple chips and channels. On the other hand, there can be a device which utilizes small zones which are mapped to one or more flash blocks on a single chip. We advocate using the small zone devices because of two reasons. First, they provide higher degree of freedom for data placement. Next, it requires less time to mitigate buried data in a zone for the host level garbage collection. So it's more easy to schedule garbage collection in either time without making other requests being delayed. Now, let me explain the challenge. Also, many papers, including ours, advocate the small zone devices. They have serious shortcomings. They exhibit much worse performance than Ryzen devices when we increase the request size. We analyze this point by using two production ZNS SSDs, which are ZNS large that utilizes large zones and ZNS small that utilizes small zones. The graph shows the read bandwidth with a single process. As shown here, the bandwidth of ZNS small is limited by about 500 megabytes while ZNS large achieves the maximum bandwidth of PCI3 when the request size is large. We can infer that the reason is internal parallelism, especially the intrazone parallelism. As you know, the internal parallelism is an important parameter to achieve high performance of SSDs. It's also important in ZNS SSDs, and there are two types of parallelism, intrazone parallelism and interzone parallelism. Let's check the intrazone parallelism first. Intrazone parallelism is a parallelism that can be utilized when accessing a single zone, and you can utilize it by increasing the request size. Then it will be divided into multiple zone requests. And in the case of large zone devices, which have a high degree of intrazone parallelism, the zone request can be striped into many different internal resources and served in parallel. So, we can get a high performance by only increasing the request size. However, in the case of small zone devices, which have a low degree of intrazone parallelism, 
the multiple sum request cannot be served in parallel since each zone only exists in a single chip. So we cannot get a high performance by increasing the request size. To get a high performance in small zone devices, we should exploit the interzone parallelism. Interzone parallelism is the parallelism which can be utilized when there are access to multiple zones at the same time. And we can exploit it by making multiple process to send requests to their dedicated zones. As shown here, if the small zones are not on the same flash disk source, the request can be served in parallel. We analyzed the performance by increasing the number of process and found that ZNS small can also achieve the maximum bandwidth by exploiting the interzone parallelism. However, we should note that the request from the front process cannot be served in parallel if the corresponding zones exist on the same flash disk source. And this phenomenon is called interzone interference. Based on our evaluation, the interzone interference can reduce the performance by about three times compared to the optimal case. Thus, the host must be aware of the interzone interference and prevent it since it can cause a serious performance degradation. Then what should we do to prevent the interference? To prevent it, the host must recognize the relationship between zones generating the interference. Then based on this information, the host needs to schedule a request appropriately. However, there is a big problem. ZNS does not provide enough abstraction about hardware configuration. Therefore, the host cannot prevent the interference as there is no information related to the interference or parallelism. To solve this problem, we suggest two simple modules. Our interference profiler detects zone-to-zone -zone relationship generating the interference. And based on this information, our interference aware IO scheduler adjusts the order of request to reduce the level of interference. Then let me first explain the interference profiler, which is used to get the information about the interference. The main idea is very simple. If we read the data from zone X and zone Y at the same time, we will get different bandwidths based on the relationship between the zones. If there is no interference between the zones, we will get a high bandwidth. Otherwise, if the zones interfere with each other as they exist on the same flash disk source, we will get a low bandwidth. So we can determine the relationship between zones by doing this simple decision process. And here is the result of the analysis that is performed on the real ZNS SSD. In this figure, blue points means low bandwidth. So it means that there are interference between two zones on X axis and Y axis. From this figure, we can see that zone zero interferes with zone nine, zone 16, and zone 25 while zone one interferes with zone eight, zone 17, and zone 24. We decided to call this set of zones which interfere with each other as conflict group. Our interference profiler analyzes the zone to conflict group mapping by using the simple decision process that I explained. We only need to give a list of zones to analyze. And I can summarize the process of our profiler as follows. It first set the threshold bandwidth, which is required to determine whether the bandwidth is high or low. Then it creates the first conflict group with the first zone. It then classifies the remaining zones into conflict groups by adding it to the existing group, creating a new conflict group. And here are the profiling result when you have filled the zones in two different orders. We found that zone to conflict group mapping can vary based on the order in which zones are written. Note that two zones in the same conflict group always interfere with each other, and two zones from different conflict groups do not interfere with each other. So based on the information about the conflict group, we can exploit the parallelism by accessing zones from different conflict groups as possible. And it is the main idea of our scheduler. Our interference OER IO scheduler is a long-time IO scheduler implemented in the block layer. Its main goal is to schedule IO requests coming from different conflict groups as many as possible. To this end, when the request arrives, it first look up the zone to conflict group mapping table and take the corresponding conflict group index to the request 
After the team process, the scheduler checks the number of wire requests which have been issued for each conflict group and modify the order of request to give high priority to conflict group having a lower number of outstanding requests. And when a request is issued to hardware queue, it updates the number of outstanding requests per conflict group. By doing this, we can fairly schedule IO requests across different conflict groups and achieve the goal. Now, let's see the variation. We compare two schedulers, which are BlogMQ, the multi IO scheduler of Linux, and ZNSMQ, which utilizes our interference for filing information. And we choose two workflows, BlocksDB and the recommendation system. We performed our variation on the production ZNSSD, whose zone size is 96 megabytes. The figures show the bandwidth of ZNSMQ and BlogMQ on LoxDB and the recommendation system. As shown in the figure, our ZNSMQ includes the bandwidth of BlogMQ by about two times on average. And if you see the telelatency results, we can find that ZNSMQ shows narrower risk of the distribution. It means that our ZNSMQ makes I request to experience similar interference levels. So ZNSMQ shows 11 times better 3.9 intel latency compared to the BlogMQ. And you also found that our ZNSMQ exhibits about two times shorter latency than BlogMQ on average. In conclusion, we quantitatively analyzed the performance degradation due to the interzone interference by using two production ZNS SSDs. We then proposed two simple modules to exploit the internal parallelism of ZNS SSDs. And our evaluation results show that our mechanism can improve the bandwidth and latency significantly. So this is the end of my presentation and thanks for listening.